In this video, we're going to look at how LV Financials can help you determine whether you should pay off your loan early. Suppose you receive a chunk of cash, whether it's an unexpected windfall or perhaps your income tax refund. One thing you could do with this chunk of cash is pay off a loan. But when you go to make this decision, you also need to consider the opportunity cost. That is the cost that you would sacrifice by paying off your loan early. We're going to see how you can use LV Financials to determine what the benefit would be for paying off your loan early, or how much you would save in terms of interest, and then approximate the opportunity cost that you would be giving up by doing so. By looking at the opportunity cost, you can determine if it would be better to put your money into a savings account or into investments instead of paying off your loan. To do this analysis, you will need a pro account. Go to the Tools drop-down in the top right and select the Loan Planning Dashboard. Go to the Amortization Schedule tab. The principal is the amount of your loan. Let's suppose that you have roughly $5,000 left on a loan. And that also happens to be the amount of cash that you receive. So you could pay down that entire balance of $5,000 with the cash that you've received. We'll leave down payment at zero. We'll set the interest rate to something like 6%. And let's suppose that you have four years left on this loan. When you scroll down, the number that you want to look at is the total cost of the loan, or in other words, the total interest that you will pay over the remainder of the loan term. This is $636. So when you look at opportunity costs, you want to see if it would be higher or lower than this $636. If it would be higher, then it might benefit you to do something else with your money rather than pay off this loan. Or if the opportunity cost is lower, then it would benefit you to just pay off this loan. So let's take a look at how you can determine opportunity cost now. Scroll back up and go to the Tools drop-down and choose the Savings Planning Dashboard. Go to the Savings Plan tab. Set the initial deposit to the same amount that you would pay on your loan. In this case, we're using $5,000 as the example. For the interest rate, you can set this to what you might expect to get if you deposit that $5,000 into a savings account or into an investment of some kind. Let's start off by assuming you will deposit it into a savings account. Since savings rates are pretty low right now, we'll set this to 1%. Change the number of years to the number of years you have left in your loan. And then go down to the additional deposit every compound period. The additional deposit every compound period is optionally uh, in an amount that you could deposit in addition to the $5,000. But to keep the com comparison fair, uh, we'll need to set this to zero dollars. Leave the number of compounding periods per year at 12 for this first example because a typical savings rate compounds monthly which would be 12 times per year. Now scroll down and look at the savings account details table on the right. The number you want to look at here is the total interest earned over the lifetime which is roughly two hundred and four dollars. Now recall that the total interest that we would pay over the lifetime of your loan, which is in this case four years remaining in the loan term, was six hundred thirty six dollars. Since the savings that you could get through interest by depositing that five thousand dollars into a savings account is lower than that six hundred thirty six dollars, 
then in this case it would benefit you to pay off the loan early because the opportunity cost is so low that you would actually be saving more by paying off your loan early. But let's go back up. Let's suppose that instead of depositing your money into a savings account, you invest it in stocks and get, say, an average interest rate per year of roughly 8%, which tracks in line with the S&P 500. Leave the number of years to save at 4, leave additional amount deposited at 0, and change the number of compounding periods per year to 1. Then scroll back down and look at the total interest earned. You can see that now it has gone up to $1,802, which is clearly higher than the $636 that you would save by paying off your loan early. So if you can get an interest rate of 8%, then you're fairly confident that the interest in stocks or investments would be consistent for these four years at roughly 8%, then it would definitely benefit you to invest in those assets rather than pay off your loan. You can continue to play around with these numbers to run different scenarios to see what threshold would be required for an alternative investment uh, to be more worthwhile than paying off your loan early.